our first night in Cambodia, we spend in this small provincial capital. For a lot of tourists, it's a common stopover on the way to or from Laos. Town itself doesn't have too much to offer, a part of the local market, couple of restaurants, guest houses and Mekong River. Actually, the local market is a big deal for local people. For a lot of them, it's the main source of income. And for others, it's the only place for shopping. Surprisingly for us, we found some iguanas and even monkeys meat on the market. And vendors weren't that happy about us filming it. After a good breakfast and brief market exploration, we were ready to start our Cambodian trip. Our primary destination was Siem Reap, with its Angkor Wat complex. So basically over 300 kilometers of paved road and full day of driving was waiting for us. On the way, we couldn't miss Koh Ker Temple that is situated about 120 kilometers northeast of Siem Reap. Koh Ker, called Lingapura, what means city of the Lingas, in ancient inscriptions, was the capital of the Khmer Empire for a very brief period of time, from 921 to 944. In this short time, as well as before and after, many sanctuaries were built and a spectacular 36 meters high, seven-tired Prasad Thom was erected. More than 180 sanctuaries have been found in an area of 81 square kilometers. Immense and beautiful sculptures were chiseled there, but all of them are now in museums or were looted. Left to the jungle for a millennium and mostly unrestored, this great archaeological site has been rarely visited until recently. Several of the most impressive pieces in the National Museum in Phnom Penh come from Koh Ker, including the huge Garuda, mythical half-man, half-bird creature that greets visitors in the entrance hall, and the unique carving depicting a pair of wrestling monkey kings. Since 1992, the site of Koh Ker has been on UNESCO's tentative list of World Heritage Sites. For some reason, this pyramid follows a linear plan and not a concentric one, like most of the temples of the Khmer kings. The staircase to the top is open to a limited number of visitors, and the views are spectacular. Koh Ker is one of the least studied temple areas from the Angkorian period, and no restoration work was ever undertaken there. Uh, sorry, sir, where did you come from? Sorry? Where did you come from? Ukraine. So after a bit of discussion, we haven't deleted the footage, no? No, they, they just decided that it's all right. I mean, because of the language barrier. Yeah, and I so. think the biggest concern is that we can crush the drone into the... And they are completely right about that. But yeah. with hundreds of hours of life, it becomes difficult to crush for us. Oh, la, la. It's always possible, but no. It is possible. Just nice glasses they have here. Mm. <laughs> hey, working hard from the young age, huh? She's not the youngest one we saw. Your bike needs some fuel, and your body requires the same. By lunchtime we got really hungry, and started looking for a place to eat. But it seems to be a difficult mission, as there were no restaurants on the way. That's the only place we found. We 
we're sitting and eating two couple of uh, grilled eggs. And, uh, <laughs> we thought they're just like normal, normal, normal egg. traditional eggs. Yeah, yeah. What in reality they are, it's half developed chicken inside. And we had that in Vietnam, no? I really didn't know. Yeah, we had it in Vietnam, but I just tried and it was delicious. I didn't think like what, what it's all about. So. But now when we discovered it's half chicken inside, it's, uh, it's not easy to finish it now. No, oh, the, the white and yellow yeah. part, you yeah. can still, huh? Yeah. No, okay. Oh, yeah. oh, some small bones. <laughs> Here, yeah. Yeah, this is a quite nice picture. Yeah, uh, very smiley Max, and I have a beautiful smile here as well. I just, it's very interesting here. It's Cambodia style. You drive to the temple. The very first time here, there are two policemen see us, stopping, uh, just coming off on the road. So we come and check the tickets. No tickets, and and she's saying, no tickets, not here. Tickets drive. Uh, it's like five kilometers away. Five kilometers away from a uh, opposite direction. There is a big building here uh, for tickets. We bought, and now we're going to temple. Can explain everything, so we, we don't really need to go there anymore. Oh really? We have here small tour, big tour, and there are some pictures here. So we just maybe we just fly a drone from the back with the map. Anchor is one of the most important archaeological sites of Southeast Asia. It extends over approximately 400 square kilometers and consists of scores of temples, hydraulic structures, as well as communication routes. For several centuries, Anchor was the center of Khmer Kingdom. In stark contrast to the often overwhelmingly crowded and popular Angkorian ruins, Bantiaik Day is peaceful and quiet. Its name means Citadel of Chambers. The ruins are a fascinating maze of chambers that I delight to explore. Also serving as a Buddhist temple, these ruins have been home to an active monastery at multiple time periods since their construction in the 12th century up until the 1960s. The temple is a treasure chest of sculptures and impressive bas reliefs of apsaras and dancing girls today. The ruins are overgrown and seemingly forgotten by the bustling anchor tourism industry. Its solitude and mystery makes it a hidden gem for explorers of the region. And Exploration Brothers been there. So we just uh, stopped in two, play two small places, medium size, and we spent maybe one hour and a half. Yeah, so it's gonna be a long day for us. You need a couple of days here, seriously. It's, uh, we've done small places. It was a huge place. We'll go in the afternoon there. Yeah, because it should be less tourists there. The modern name of this imposing and intriguing temple mountain translates as turning the body, referring to an ancient cremation rite, but its origin were unrelated to cremation ceremonies. Prerab was built in 961 as the state temple of the king and was dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva. Hello there. Really nice. You like? I feel like I need to get the book and study it properly because quite interesting history I guess here around. Very impressive how they build it. It has been covered with intricate carvings, but due to less durable grey sandstone, over time the temple walls have slowly eroded in the wind and rain. In the early 20th century, the prayer room had been completely overgrown and covered with soil. The temple was excavated during the 1930s by French conservators. What do you think about the ladies trying to sell you some drinks and coconut? It sounds quite desperate because I think it works. Who's louder, who can attract more clients, make more money, it makes sense. When Anchor was named a World Heritage Site in 1992, it was also added to the list of World Heritage in danger. The whole complex was threatened by pillaging caused by illegal excavations. 
and even dotted with landmines. In 1993, UNESCO launched a major campaign to restore and safeguard Anchor. Thanks to international cooperation, Anchor rebounded so dramatically that it was removed from the list of world heritage in danger in 2004. Oh, with a fresh breeze and this 30 degrees day. Yeah, but you don't feel that hot actually. I feel hot. And, the, and this breeze is, is like a medicine. The word Anchor is derived from the Sanskrit Nagara, meaning city, with impressive monuments, several different ancient urban plants and large water reservoirs. The site has a unique concentration of features, testifying to an exceptional civilization. The Anchor complex represents the entire range of Khmer art from the 9th to the 14th centuries and includes a number of indisputable artistic masterpieces. After a warm-up with the smaller temples, we were ready for the most important and impressive ones, so it was time to visit the heart of Angkor Thom with this 12th century Bayon temple. It is touristic here, and it is very hot. But tourists here for some reason. So it's, it's really one of the world wonders. Really impressive. Yeah, like the... It's not like a pizza tower where people have a finger or they yeah. just... You will see it's interesting guys there. They're trying to hold the wall so it's not falling down. <laughs> Though Bayon is now known to have been built by Jayavarman VII, for many years its origins were unknown. Shrouded in dense jungle, it also took researchers some time to realize that it stands in the exact center of the city of Angkor Thom. There is still much mystery associated with Bayon, such as its exact function and symbolism. And this seems only appropriate for a monument whose signature is an enigmatic smiling face. Yeah. Angkor Wat is the primary reason for more than 50% of international tourists visiting Cambodia each year. The Anchor Archaeological Park welcomed nearly 2.6 million international visitors in 2018, generating more than 100 million in revenue. The Bayon's most distinctive feature is the multitude of serene and smiling stone faces on the many towers, which jut out from the upper terrace and cluster around its central peak. The similarity of the 216 giant faces on the temple's towers to other statues of the king has led many scholars to the conclusion that the faces are representation of Jayavarman VII himself. The Bayan was the last state temple to be built in Angkor, and the only Angkorian state temple to be built primary as a Mahayana Buddhist shrine dedicated to the Buddha. 37 standing towers belong to Bayon Temple, with its central tower rising 43 meters above the ground. I was expecting it to be empty because we are so important guests, because we are coming. But it's not empty, it's a lot of tourists actually, again. Angkor Wat is the heart and soul of Cambodia and a source of fierce national pride. It even appears on the national flag. Unlike the other Angkor monuments, it was never abandoned to the elements and has been in virtually continuous use since it was built. It was originally built in the first half of the 12th century by Emperor Suryavarman II at the state temple and political center of his empire. Originally dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, Angkor Wat became a Buddhist temple by the end of the 12th century. Spread across more than 400 acres, Angkor Wat is said to be the largest religious monument in the world. Hot and beautiful. Really nice complex. The height of Angkor Wat from the ground to the top of the central tower is greater than it might appear. 230 meters. Are you ready to wait for this line or should we skip it? <laughs> now we can wait for 45 minutes just to get there. I will try maybe just to get in front of the line. I know some tricks. Dumb face. Dumb face. Just stay there next to them. Give it a bit further. Further. 
And you're already overtook one person, you know? Easy. And, and other hundreds before. What do you think about that? Quite impressive. It's really long. It's like over 50 meters artwork and it's all handmade. They call it Florence of Cambodia. If you come to Florence, you will see the amazing ceilings and churches. This is amazing also. They can compete, I guess, but it feels a bit like it's copy and cold because you can recognize the same parts yeah, every yeah. maybe like a couple of meters. We'll or maybe help. it's just a big, it's a big fight. It's a lot of soldiers, they all look quite the same. A lot of horses. We were on the way to the capital and um, we stopped oh. in the middle. There is a temple complex called the Sambur Preikuk. I don't know, after what we saw before. Yeah, nothing can be compared to... Yeah, I don't know, I, I don't feel like to film anything. I think it's still a nice walk, you know, nice forest. It's nice walk, but birds. it's not stunning views and amazing footage. Anyway, we'll still walk because we paid the entrance fee, so we have to walk now. It's actually cheap here, it's $3 for one, compared to $20 in low season in that one, in the expensive but one. But the thing just, you get what you pay for, you know? $3, you get for $3. Okay, let's pay for 20 Nice and chill here. Yeah, yeah. Refresh. Usually it's this temple much greener, but now it's dry season. Unfortunately, the first English words a lot of Cambodian kids learn. We started the day with a nice word. Actually, it was always sunny until now. Being on the road could bring you many surprises. And the main surprise wasn't this guy. Check this out. For many thousands of years, the art of stone carving has flourished in Cambodia. From the small statues made by local artisans to the famous breathtaking carvings found in Angkor Wat, stone carving has become one of the country's most cherished art forms. Stone carving has become both a passion and a livelihood for many Cambodian sculptors. The art of stone carving in Cambodia has a very long and fascinating history, which goes back to the foundation of the Khmer nation. During the turbulent years of the war, raging next door in South Vietnam, civil war and totalitarian rule by the Khmer Rouge, the art of stone carving in Cambodia was almost completely lost. Many of the country's artists were either killed in war or murdered by the Khmer Rouge during the period of their rule. Are you going to buy one? Uh, motorbike. This. <laughs> We finally arrived to the, to the capital of Cambodia. This one, it feels like a city. Bigger buildings, higher, nice higher. park. You have more, more air here. Remember that you're still in Cambodia, so you can find everything. Maybe nice building, but underneath that, small food vendors. Beautiful pigeons. It's good, so. good fun for kids and for us as well. Trying to feed them. We just stay one day, only today. And we'll carry on driving to the ocean. And we'll probably run a bit with the pigeons, so mm. a bit of physical activity is always good. True. You need a one hour run from TV2? Yes sir? Yes? You need a one hour run from TV2 sir? From TV2 sir? I tell you cheap! These two tube drivers, they're using special technique here. Hello! Hello! They, they, the key to success for them is the more you see product, the more after you want it. You know, like music, the more you listen to the song you don't like. That's what they're doing on the TV. Yeah. They show you some crap advertisement and you, maybe after 100 of times, you're like, oh, maybe I should buy it actually. People love the country, yeah? I'm talking about the traffic on the river. Sad story. You need to do your part and 
drop the garbage in the garbage bin if you will find one. <laughs> For about six weeks, we've been eating into Asian restaurants, and today we're trying Burger King again. I feel guilty when you have such, such a big selection of Asian food around. But I'm actually enjoying it now. I think because you're hungry. I am hungry. That's the thing. alternative fuel for our bodies so we can carry on driving just some uh, quick thoughts about buying things in uh, Cambodia we had three times already in uh, four days discussions regarding money first time we had uh, the guy he didn't give me back 5,000 I was sitting in the bar waiting for him to give me back I walked to him and asked him oh, he said yes of course of course I sit down five minutes more and he's like okay man give me money so then he gave money Second time, fuel station, they give people give their money back. And they forgot to give you like 1,000. 1,000. Here, we bought some corn and uh, there was discussion. We gave him 10,000, they're saying we give 5,000. So, Cambodia, yes. in our opinion, they, they like to keep money and give you less money. Short, and short hand, D different business models. Yeah. And we just carry on traveling. After a long day of driving, we finally got to the seaside. The plan was to visit Kampot and Kep. From here you can easily visit a variety of small islands. We stopped there just for two nights. It was enough to check the whole area, but it's not very inviting water and overpriced restaurants. Unfortunately, we didn't have much time for deeper exploration. We were ready to make our way to Vietnam. This was a really exciting day, as we were planning to cross the border from Cambodia to Vietnam. Basically, we opened Google Maps with satellite view and decided to check rice fields along the border with Vietnam and enjoy the beautiful nature of Cambodia. Everything would be nice and easy if you didn't have any obstacles on the way. Even if it's dry season, you still have these puddles of water, which we successfully overcame. Sometimes I needed to remove my shoes, and now it's a game on. That's the tricky one. You never know how deep next puddle gonna be, but Max made it. It was really stressful, even if the camera is not showing this. It's an interesting place with the scooter. <laughs> Let's go on my back. You need to be double careful because it's slippery underneath. No? Yeah, sometimes it's uh, hard, sometimes it's like mud. I, I imagine what's happening here in the wet season. <sighs> we felt the smell of delicious Vietnamese coffee from the village in front of us. So we decided to enjoy a cup. Once we finished, we realized that the engine is not starting anymore. So we decided to walk back and cross the border on foot. Photo. Photo, video. This camera. Ah, no, no, moto, no, moto, no, no. Thank you. No. We walk. We walk. Do you have a cafe? Okay, cafe good. On the way back, we met some curious local people. But lack of common language ruined our intercultural experience. As you can see from the footage, we couldn't understand what they were asking us. And after chatting with them for about five minutes, we carried on walking. 